So the idea of a digital transformation is getting a little bit hackneyed and I think the audience was interested to know what it actually meant because they've heard it a lot. It's been used again and again by software manufacturers and uh, um, and gadget manufacturers to uh, suggest to them that it's going to change their world. But I think a lot of organisations are don't believe that and they're trying to find out what it actually means for them. And I've come across in my research some amazing stats with regard to businesses who do digital transformation really well um, and they simply perform better. Interestingly, they spend very little more than those who don't. So you could look at one type of organisation as a, as a leader, the ones who are doing it really, really well, and then I think the, the term of choice is laggard for the ones who aren't doing so well. And there are other ways that people measure it, like digital IQ, for instance. Um, so a lot of the conversation yes, at, at the event was what makes leaders leaders? What are the characteristics that they exhibit that make them stand out from the crowd in terms of their the value that they're getting from their digital investments? So I think the major areas, maybe, maybe three, four major um, points uh, I shared with the audience, the first one is digital transformation is not an app. Um, you can't go and buy it off the shelf and be digitally transformed. It's a little bit like, you know, you have a, uh, a, a learning portal. Doesn't make you a learning organisation. Uh, having a Kanban system doesn't make you a lean organisation. And having a gadget attached to your inventory doesn't make you a digitally transformed organisation. So that really is the first thing. It's not an app. It really is a strategy. And it's an all-encompassing sort of management strategy, more than it is any individual piece of technology. What is really interesting is that there are very, very big differences between the results that organisations get on their digital spend. So for a very little amount more, uh, digital leaders get huge increments in gross margin, gross profit percentages. And why is that? What makes them, what makes them different um, than other organisations who spend almost as much on on technology and yet don't see those differences. Um, the second thing is it's business focused, not really technology focused. And one of the evidences of that is in leading organisations, often the CEO is the digital leader. They are taking the responsibility for the success of digital projects. So a lot of these digital initiatives are moving out of the IT department. Digital leaders tend to spend their um, investments across a broader area of the business. So rather than focus, which we have traditionally done, on op organisational optimization, which is basically doing the same things better, faster, smarter, um, we see more uh, effort around things like employee empowerment, um, providing tools to employees to, to get more out of their workday or to contribute more. We see more spend in, uh, the, around the customer and customer engagement. So interestingly, we're seeing budgets move from the CIO through to the CMO or the marketing organisation. And lastly, uh, product transformation. This is where you're looking at um, using technology to transform products. A lot of organisations are seeing that as an opportunity to wrap services around their products. Another point I think that's really important is that this is a process. It's not something that happens overnight. And organisations need to prepare to take on that process. With, with things like really good change management. Um, and then as the digital plans roll out, um, a view to continuous improvement. Lastly, one of the interesting areas I think for organisations um, who are looking to, to be one of the leaders is that there is a need to support a higher level or acceptance of risk. Now this risk doesn't need to be all encompassing, but certainly what digital leaders do is they provide a structure within their organisation to allow for both experimentation and failure, um, which is a measured amount of risk in terms of adopting some of these technologies. So data can't be overemphasised. Um, it's a really interesting thing with digital transformation that data, I mean data's always been there with us, we've always been worried about our data, but with digital transformation we're now starting to see tools that can really get us to leverage that data and make better decisions. What we've seen in, in studies on the topic are that leading organisations who've really maximised the value of their um, transformational efforts have moved far away from the old style gut decision making 
and are pushing everything towards database decisions. So that's a really interesting change for organisations. And what it, what it suggests is number one, the data that you've got right now, is it even correct? So for a lot of organisations who are looking to, to start on this transformational journey, I think one of the important things they have to think about up front is what data are they collecting? Is it correct? Is it complete? And does it provide a good foundation for, for further a analytics? Of course, the kind of technology that's now available, organisations are able to pull data in from outside. There's still a bit of difficulty trying to find that dark data, the data within the organisation that nobody knows where it is, like in Excel spreadsheets or Word documents or PowerPoints. Um, but the idea really is to pull that data together so that you can merge it with external information, say, that, so, say about your customers' buying habits or weather patterns or whatever, uh, to make better and better decisions. Data is a massive part of digital transformation. There's a really interesting study from IDC that was released earlier in 2017. Um, that suggested that the spend on digital on the 12-month period, um, we're looking at around $1.3 trillion of digital spend. That's a lot of money. The most interesting thing I saw from the report was that IDC also predicted that some 70% of projects where that money was de designated to may well fail or certainly not get the payback that they're expecting. That's what anyone would call an, a, an incredibly massive risk. So it's really important for our clients to understand that although risk, a small amount of risk taking is really important for these digital projects, that they don't want to be one of the statistics. Um, they don't want to be in the majority. What, what can they do to be in that special minority that actually has those digital transformation projects pay off? And one of the areas where I suggest to clients to look is understanding the different systems that they have in their business and applying different levels of risk to those different systems. So first off, you've got your systems of record and these are your transactional systems. They're systems that meet your compliance requirements, they do your plain old data processing, they're your systems that do billing, your accounting, banking. A lot of those are attributes of an ERP system, for example. Um, nobody's really going to get a competitive advantage over how well you do your accounts receivable receipt process. So understanding that those systems of records, I think systems of record, are, are systems that should not be meddled with and try not to get innovative and um, uh, transformative is a good way to start. So lock those down and say, right, we're not going to take any risk with them, we'll be safe and secure with our systems of record. Then on top of that, you've got systems of intelligence, you've got systems of differentiation, things that make you different, things where you can get competitive advantage from. So you might be able to deliver faster, smarter, provide a more, um, a, a, a better customer experience. Those are the areas when you can start to be a little bit more um, um, adopting of risk. Then lastly, I think the area where you're looking for pure innovation, that's where you actually have to say, I am prepared to take some risk. And that may be by looking at ways to wrap technology around your products to create a service out of them. Um, but they are the ones that where you can get creative. And I think it's really important if you understand that you can do different levels of risk across different systems and understand where those systems sit in your business um, is a very useful path for people who are looking to transform. So I think, I think organisations first need to stop and say, where am I, where am I now? Um, am I a laggard? Am I a leader? I think if you're asking that question, you're probably not a leader. Um, <laughs> um, where am I now with my digital journey? How, how ready am, is my organisation to consume some of the changes that might, by, might be required? Um, have I got my business goals and objectives laid out in a way that I can look at them from a digital perspective? Um, I think also benchmarking, so understanding where in their industry other organisations are at with their use of digital, what are your competitors doing, understanding what competitive products um, or services uh, have some level of digital. The other thing I think is, is looking at your transformational readiness. So that's a little bit like, ha have, I, have I done my foundation? Have I got a solid enterprise resource planning system? Have I got a, a reasonably good 
use of things like CRM and other applications? Am I collecting data that can I, I can leverage from? Is it modern enough to be able to work with all of these new technologies? Because I think it's, it's difficult to build a digital strategy on a weak foundation. So I think that's something that's really important. I think organisations need to form some level of digital strategy and that can be built in with their business strategy or, or in tandem with their business strategy. But it's really important again for the organisation, from the management and leadership of the organisation to share a vision across the organisation that, that is reflective of their digital strategy and their overall business strategy. I think it's important also for the organisation to look at the kind of structure they need to consume this. So for example, is it worthwhile to create a, a, a cross-functional digital team of sorts? Do you need someone to drive this through the organisation? Um, generally, the role is not of the, from the IT department these days. People are, are creating roles, a CDO, a, a digital, chief di digital officer, or is this something the CEO is going to, is going to champion? So organisational preparedness in terms of the structure, or who's going to own it, who's going to be responsible for it, uh, for a lot of this. Yes, creating a digital roadmap. I think it's really important to have a look out the next 12 to 18 months to sort of see what sort of initiatives, where do you want to go with this? Once you've done your strategy, you have an idea of what sort of technologies you might want to look at, bring in an experimental or test mode, have pilots, and what that next 12 to 18 months is going to look like. And I think probably the most important thing is to get started.